we decided as a school at North Sanch to go to multi-age classrooms. The biggest concern we heard was not only from staff but also parents was how are we going to do math. And that first year we struggled a little bit trying to find ways to do it and we had some teachers sharing so the grade sixes would go one way and grade sevens go the other way. And we found that kind of defeated the purpose of why we went to multi-age classes in the first place which was to get to know our students better, to build relationships and get to know their learning so that we could support them through. And as we worked, we started to find out that when we went to the multi-age math model, we were coming up with some really clever ways of engaging students and finding ways to, to make a 6-7 model work. And what had started out as our concern had started to show up as a strength, and kids were starting to talk positively about math. They enjoyed math, they wanted to go to math class. It became our philosophy that we were gonna be a multi-age math school and we were going to uh, support them in different ways. When I first started at North Saanich three years ago, I taught straight grade seven math, and it was, this is what we're doing, everybody's doing it, let's take out the textbook, and let's really move you through the curriculum. And that's what I felt like I was doing, I was dragging kids through the curriculum. I used to feel frustrated that I wasn't able to meet all the kids' needs in my class, and I still feel that sometimes, but I, way more often I feel like, yeah, that kid was getting it, or yeah, I got to have a conversation with that kid. Um, much less feeling like I'm fighting trying to teach the whole group and losing this end and this end. As an educator we see more of a range of students and their abilities within our class especially with math and this is quite different where I'm meeting kids where they are at so that they can work themselves through the curriculum at the pace that they need to do that. Having kids work at their ability allows them to experience success. When they experience success, they build confidence. And as they build confidence, they're willing to try more, to do more, to practice more, and then the cycle continues. More success, more confidence. It's changed the way we deal with students because we're meeting them um, where they're at. And, and that's really changed the dynamic because um, we see it, we don't have as many office referrals. Uh, we see kids are much more engaged and to be honest we see our staff is empowered because uh, they really feel like they're doing a good job and they're you know they're kind of uh, embracing that growth mindset of moving forward. I've noticed that I had kind of an aha moment when I first started this um, philosophy and it, about classroom management. I was putting glass band-aids on problems and getting kids to sit down here and there, but more about moving through the classroom and helping kids where they needed to be helped at that moment. The way I used to teach maths was more like a stand and deliver model where we would go over examples ad nauseum and the kids would lose interest. And this way we do a little bit of an intro and then the kids get to, to play. They get to, to work and they get to figure out what they know, what they don't know. And the kids have been really great about figuring out that they need to ask for help to move forward. So it's been really helpful to me that the kids are asking for what they need when they need it rather than having to uh, solve the problems way later. We have different levels that are set up from we've got basic, intermediate and advanced. And so the kids can choose where they want to start. Um, and I encourage them to you know, try to pick one that's gonna be you know, not too easy, but that they can move forward on. It makes math a little more accessible to students who aren't comfortable with it. And it allows those students that need to be challenged, it gives them that opportunity to be challenged. I like how we each get to choose like basic, intermediate, and advanced. So we all have like our own like checklist so we can do what we feel like we want to do. I've like tried advanced but it was too hard for me so I tried it in media and it's a good place for me to work. Well see because there's multiple levels it allows you to learn at your own pace so you're not learning at too high of a level but you don't want to learn at too low of a level. You can get your sweet spot say on level two, one or three, whatever you feel comfortable with. Best part about this system is that there's other people that are doing the same level as you and they understand it. You might not understand something, but someone else might understand something that you don't, but they don't understand something that you do. And you can collaborate together to get all the right answers and to move on up on the higher levels. In that aspect, it's a much better environment for collaborative thinking. One of the best things that I like about it is that I get to spend less time up at the front. So before I would do a lesson, I'd do the warm up and I'd be talking away and 
you know, maybe a quarter of the class doesn't understand what I'm talking about, maybe a quarter of the class is really bored because they already get it. Spending less time in front of the class means that I can spend more time in small groups, dealing with kids more one-on-one -on -one and being able to touch base with them a lot more. And that actually helps with my assessment too because I, I understand where people are at a lot more than I did probably previously. It's better than just taking down notes and that's it because uh, if you're taking down notes and you already know what you're doing, it gets kind of boring. One group of students might be at a place where they need a little bit of instruction. So instead of teaching to the whole class, I tend to teach to small groups based on what they're needing. And I've started to also wind up the day with a little bit of reflection in their books and having them think about their learning for the day and, and write a little bit about that. This allows us to give kids stuff to work on that's at their level so that they feel successful. I have a much greater understanding of where my students are at because I'm working more closely with them instead of them sitting there and watching or me teaching in front of them. So they check in with me and say, hey, I'm finished, what do we think? And I'll do just a little mini assessment with them. So I'll write a question on the board. Hey, can you solve this question for me right now? Yes, I can, so then you move on. Ultimately, assessment in my classroom is moving away from you got an A because you got a 9 out of 10 on this test and more to a sort of a concept based where yes I've mastered the concept of adding fractions or, no I'm not quite there yet or that sort of thing. Moving more to skill based assessment uh, and holistic assessment so I'm really not giving a math test and totaling it up and finding a percentage and assigning a grade it's what does a student understand uh, what are the skills that they've mastered what are the skills that they're still working on um, and assessing that way. I don't refer to them as quizzes or tests anymore. I refer to them as assessment. It's where you are right now in time and that can change. Kids in my class can take as many assessments that they need to show me that they have gained the skills to, to move forward. So I do a lot of um, reassessment with the students and if they're willing to put in the time then I'm willing to reassess them. I would never go back to teaching math any other way. You're still going to have those variations in student abilities in every class, we know that. It started as a way to meet the very diverse needs of a multi-age classroom but it can meet the needs in any classroom. Well, I feel successful because I can do it at my own pace. We're not rushing through everything, but we're not taking it too slow. So we always learn something new. In grade, um, up to grade three, I did not like math at all because I wasn't good at it. And I actually started really liking math because I became better and better at it. The multi-age math has allowed us to move forward as a group. And what we are finding in our own data collection is that Kids are saying they're engaged in class, they're engaged in math, and as middle school people, we realize that at this age, students start to become less interested and less engaged in school, and we're really worried about that. And this is one way we are finding that a high percentage of our kids are saying they're engaged in math, they're challenged in math, or they're working at their, their comfort level, and they're, they're really happy with their math improvement and, and what they're accomplishing and they're proud of it. So that makes us feel good.